This Equipment World video is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. Today we're here to talk about alternative fuels. As we're all familiar, the industry seems to really be pushing electric equipment and we're just not there yet. I'm sorry, but the technology is not here to really be viable for us in the construction space. But some of the other alternative fuels are significantly closer than I really realized. And here to talk about that today with us is Steve Nindick with Cummins, who just released a 15 liter engine that has some real potential for coming into our industry. So without further ado, here's Steve. You guys at Con Expo released the 15 liter fuel agnostic engine. Can you kind of explain to the audience why this is such a big deal for not only the on-road market, but but really for us in the off-road market segment? Yeah, sure. I think it, it's really unclear what's going to be the best solution for reducing carbon emissions long term. I think it's more complex in the off-highway business than it is in, in the on-highway business, just because of the wide variation of types of machines duty cycles, the way, the way these machines operate. So we developed this agnostic engine really, and it offers manufacturers three options, clean diesel, natural gas, or hydrogen. So they can make a choice. They can use one, two, or all three with a common machine design, common installation, depending on what their customers really need. It really gives them flexibility to be where they are on their path to zero, as we call it, that, you know, not everyone's at the same place and we can help them wherever they are at. The 15 liter is, is what we call our next generation platform. It's compact, it's low weight, but still with high power and, and torque and the durability and reliability that people expect in, in the construction industry. They want tough machines, right? And, sure. and our engines do that for, for the machines. Uh, yeah, it's specially designed for those alt alternate fuels. It's not just a converted diesel. Our engineers have looked at what are the key design features needed to maximize the power and torque for not just for the diesel but for the hydrogen and the natural gas using this sort of technology though it's really it's tech that the industry knows and trusts right so there's a lot of new stuff around which people are wary of whereas this people can make some real improvements on on their carbon emissions but they've got something that fits in today's machines goes through all today's service and support networks you know what i mean they, they can really use the technologies that they know and, and are happy with. And we're going to offer this technology on, on all of our platforms. So the 15 litre is the first one that we've shown. But our, our, the next versions of our 9 litre and our 6.7 litre engines will also have that capability too. So at least on our side of the table, the guys in the field, it feels like alternative fuels are still, you know, a decade away. But one of the things that, that was really apparent to me at Con Expo is especially when it comes to the compressed natural gas, like this isn't nearly as far away as we thought. We could be seeing things within the next five years on the job site. And one of the big revelations to me was the amount of use we have with compressed natural gas currently in the infrastructure in place. Could you kind of speak to that a little bit of kind of where we're at currently with compressed natural gas? Yeah, so coming to see, seeing a real uptake in compressed natural gas, but more in the on-highway market. It's been a bit more of a challenge yet on the off-highway market, and, and I'll, I'll explain a bit in, in detail on, on that one. In the on-highway market, things like delivery trucks, refuse trucks, buses, they have a what they call a return to base type of operation. So investing in the filling capability for natural gas at high pressure is more cost justifiable if everything's returning to the same place. Well, that's a bit more challenging for construction because you have to install it on a construction site, which once the construction's finished, then that has to move on. So that's a, a, a challenge that we've got to overcome. You know, we've seen natural gas used in things like forklift trucks for quite some years because they operate in buildings, warehouses, and, and there's a real focus on emissions on those. But in the larger equipment, it has been a challenge for people. It, I think it will come at some point, but there's some challenges to overcome. So right now you use about twice as much gas as you would diesel. To have the same operational capability number of hours, you would need double the size of the tank. And, and because of that, you've got to package that somewhere on, on the machine. On a bus, you'll see they put it on the roof. On a refuse truck, they put it behind the cab. But 
in the construction equipment is where the heck do they put it? And there's a lot of focus on the packaging, lines of sight for safety so the operator can see. So they've got to be able to find somewhere in the machine where they can put these tanks without impacting that. Uh, operation. Also, the cost of the fuel, from what we've seen so far, because you use twice as much gas as diesel, but the price is about half. So the net fuel cost has been about the same. So a gas-powered machine is slightly more expensive as we were expected to be. So there needs to be a good business case to move to gas. So you need the gas to be cheaper. So hopefully, longer term, that will happen. Who knows? And um, but the, you know, for Cummins. Because we're using the technology in, on highway, we're ready to use it in off highway should the cost, the business case change or government regulations come in to support that. So we're not expecting the next off highway regulations called tier five to come in until around 2029. We're still waiting to find out from the EPA what that says, but CNG could be part of that, hydrogen could be part of that. We're still waiting with the in anticipation what that's going to be. Yeah. Now kind of switching gears a little bit. So many guys in our industry, you know, diesel is king. We miss our old soot clouds rolling out of the exhaust. And so this whole idea of switching fuels and going to alternative fuels is a very negative thing for the industry. But but the flip side is there are some real positives to come out of switching away from diesel. Can you talk to some of the pros of going towards an alternative fuel like compressed natural gas or hydrogen? But before we get into that, I want to take a second to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Chevron Lubricants. Protecting your diesel engine and its exhaust after treatment system has traditionally been seen as an either or proposition when it comes to choosing the engine oil that's going to protect your system. And that's exactly why Chevron spent more than a decade of R&D work developing a no compromise formulation. Now I don't have to tell you why a clogged DPF is bad news, but here's the real kick in the pants. 90% of that ash clogging up your DPF and then upping your fuel and maintenance costs? It comes from your engine oil. You might be thinking, why don't they make an engine oil with less ash in it then? You'll be happy to learn that Chevron agrees with you. They've developed a new ultra low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. Dello 600 ADF with OmniMax technology cuts sulfate ash by 60%, radically reducing the rate of DPF clogging and extending the DPF service life by two and a half times. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, now you don't. Dello 600 ADF with OmniMax technology. It's time to kick some ash. Can you talk to some of the pros of going towards an alternative fuel like compressed natural gas or hydrogen? Sure. Well, firstly, the, the latest diesels are, are super clean and, and way better than, than they've ever been in the past. So the latest tier four final engines we have in North America, what we call our performance series products, we've reduced emissions by like 95, 96% since the legislation began in the mid 90s. So if, if you're using the latest products, you're getting a real clean green machine. As we move to our alternate fuels, they aren't going to be an option in the future. They're, they are going to be necessary to drive down carbon emissions for us all. The emissions regulations in the past have not really been focused on carbon. They've been focused on things called NOx and particulates, stuff that causes air pollution, air quality issues. So that will be a change in, in the regulations. We've seen that coming in, in the EPA on road regulations so far, but we've not seen that in the off-road as of yet. The thing about alternate fuels, there's got to be a good business reason, a bit like the, the, the gas that I explained, for the t for new types of technology be, to be adopted. So either the cost's got to be cheaper or the government's got to regulate them that, hey, you must use this. And those are not there yet. And I think that will come. But right now, there's not a real push in, in the industry as yet. I think, and, and as you say, everyone's a bit concerned about this and, and we need to get some of this proven and tested so everyone can, can get some confidence in it. Um, our current performance series products can use something called HVO100 biofuel. It stands for hydro treated vegetable oil which basically you're using waste fuel, waste liquids like vegetable oil um, and it's, it's refined to a standard like diesel but you get a CO2 reduction of about 90% well to wheel compared to standard diesel. So that's something that people can use pretty much now on our current products uh, as an alternate fuel. 
it is slightly higher cost than standard diesel, but not significantly higher. And so it is doable. Of course, CNG and, and hydrogen, they are the future for reducing emissions. And hydrogen is the real zero carbon one. So I think that's really the future. The current clean diesels and, and the CNG ones are, are a real step towards zero but we'll need other things to get there by, by 2050, which is the point. Gotcha. I guess for, for someone who doesn't really get the full conversation, if CNG is kind of here, we're already utilizing it on highway applications, it's, it doesn't seem like it would be a huge hurdle to get it over into the off-highway world. Why bother with hydrogen? Because hydrogen, it's, it sounds like you're working with significantly higher pressures. There's a little bit more difficulties associated. Why not just stick with compressed natural gas? So hydrogen gas is, is a good solution. It does deliver improved emissions and and it's a lot quieter in, in its operation compared to a standard diesel product. Um, you notice that. CNG and, and hydrogen both, the, the fuel isn't as efficient as diesel. You can't get quite as much power for the same gallon of, of fuel, if you like. So so there is a power reduction. Now, one of the things with our 15 litre, we've we've maximized that capability so people wouldn't really notice the difference, but that is something to take in, into account when you're using these fuels. So CNG is certainly a, pos a positive step, but it's not zero carbon. It still has a combustion process and, and it's still um, produces carbon in, in the way the fuel is produced and the way it works. If you can find biogas, you, you know, that, that's, that's produced from farms or from refuge sites, things like that, you know, that's a good environmental solution. But hydrogen is really the only true zero carbon fuel. That's why I think that's, that's the more longer term solution. We've got to find a way to produce it in a green way. There's various different colours of hydrogen, you know, if, if you sort of read into this, depending on the way it's produced and the emissions are produced when it's manufactured. So the green hydrogen is produced using solar or wind power, and that's where we want to get to. And Cummins is, is working on machines called electrolyzers, which are used to take that power and create hydrogen in that. So hydrogen is definitely the future, but it'll take some time. So CNG could be an option in the meantime before that. One of the things we really see as a benefit for hydrogen combustion engines is because it's a technology that's proven in the engines, people are more likely to adopt it more quickly, but will create demand for hydrogen in the infrastructure, and that will be able to be used for hydrogen fuel cells in the future, which is another long-term option for, for both on and off highway industries. Interesting. It is it is really cool to see what's happening behind the scenes. And, and while it is scary, you know, as contractors in the industry thinking that we're going to have to totally retool our fleets here in the in the relatively near future, while that is kind of a scary proposition, it's also pretty exciting to see some of the new technologies that are coming around and just really how quickly this technology is advancing as we kind of dive headfirst into it as an industry. Yeah, it's it is it's a truly interesting time, and, and I think Cummins is the company. Where our engineers are focusing on all of the the solutions that because we just really not, now don't know which one is going to be the end solution, the winner. Sure. Um, and and it's important that that we build our expertise, our engineering capability to help our customers, who are the essentially the equipment manufacturers, and their customers to understand how that works, how that impacts their operations and how we can help them maximize their their productivity. That, that's the key thing in this industry. Well, Steve, thank you so much for the time and thank you for all the information. This has been great. No problem. You're welcome, Brian, anytime. Well, thank you again for Steve coming on the show and taking the time to talk about some of the alternative fuels that are headed our way in this industry. It's a very interesting conversation. We're in a very interesting time. And while it is difficult to get away from what we've known and loved for so long, our beautiful diesel engines, it is exciting. Some of the prospects of being able to, you know, dump off the emission systems, that's got some real potential to it. So as always, I hope this helps you in your business. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys on the next episode of The Dirt.